Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, our goal is to find ways to fight COVID-19 by bringing down the cost, especially for testing, you know, and perhaps those that are decision makers are watching and would adopt some of these solutions that we're bringing um, tonight. So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 603 So I have some SMSs and um, I'll come to you in case you take some. Um, someone, I don't know, the person didn't drop their name, says, so the, the so-called NIN registration needed um, to link to phone numbers should be stopped immediately to reduce the spread of COVID-19 at these centers. Now, a reasonable government would have halted the exercise a long time ago. Of course, that one we've been, we've been talking about that for a very long time. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. they are listening. So um, you, have, you have some comments with you? Yeah, um, someone said the billions contributed cannot be deployed to subsidize the procurement of the vaccine. And another one, the CA COVID funding cannot be further encouraged to help procure the vaccine to help arrest the scare and the spread. That's the Kakovich. That's yes. the one, the coalition of um, them, Dan Gautier and all of those people. Yes. Um, then he says a population of 200 million is yet to be to be able to produce any component, uh, compo uh, comp maybe saying competent um, component, sorry, for testing. That's the question he's asking. So Dr. Yemi, see, let, I want us to go back to this thing because I know that testing is very, very critical in terms of, you know, fighting the spread of COVID-19 because you really cannot tell yeah. if it is malaria or if it is COVID, COVID until you do a test. test. Now, I was talking to one of our anchors. She was saying that her aunt caught, I mean, got ill, really ill, was treating malaria, treating typhoid. This thing lasted for like almost two months. This is somebody that's supposed to be learned. Mm -hmm. Go and get a COVID test. No, I don't have COVID. Go, go for me. You understand? <laughs> I, <coughs> sorry. So I just sorry. feel like a lot of people are actually, it, for me, it's, it's annoying. It's not like it's, um, so it's not like it's HIV. Mm -hmm. Where I know that if I do, if I'm careful, I will not contract yeah, it. So yeah. if I do the test, I know that I've done the yeah, test done and the I'm test, and I'm yeah. clean. But this one, I can just say hello to you and I've contracted it. So why would something as uh, quick to spread like that have so much cost attached to it? So I hear you. You are saying that the NGOs should come on board, churches should come on board, mosques should come on board. Uh, what's it called? The government cannot do it alone. Governments should subsidize. But we know that in Nigeria. Already, if something costs 220 naira, eh? the government can come and say the thing costs 200 naira. That is the, or, the, the standard of, what's it called, corruption that is already within Nigeria. So are you, are you trying to tell me that this cost, you know, there is no embedded corruption inside somewhere happening? You know, because I don't understand why the, the cost, the, 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 and the kit will be so expensive for something that it spreads so quickly. That's, that's actually a valid question that we should all be asking. Um, I mean, here in the United States, if you want to pay for COVID tests, it could range anywhere from, say, $100 to maybe $200, depending on where you go to. That's if you have to pay out of pocket. And, um, you know, we are still seeing this. When I say we, I mean the government so not just in nigeria you know even the united states until maybe just a few weeks ago right we have to tie this to the the, the how do i put this the overall well-being of the society if the society is not well which is where we are now with this pandemic if we're unwell all aspects of society is going to be affected mm. which is what we all see the government, you know, there's corruption everywhere. There's corruption here, there's corruption in Nigeria, there's corruption everywhere. But if the federal government, the state government, the local government, they have to realize that the issue of COVID-19 is different, all right? It's not right to, do, to say I want to uh, take the money to build a road and take it for myself and be corrupt about it. But taking the money meant for this pandemic and everything that is associated with it, I think it's 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 beyond par. Because, you know, so many, even the, the rich and mighty have been affected. And a lot of them have lost their lives as well. So the government should realize that controlling this pandemic is not just important for the people, mm -hmm. it's important for me. If Nigeria is, is controlled for the pandemic, then I can keep getting richer, right? I can keep doing what I was doing before. So 
everybody has to see it as such. Everybody has to. People have, okay, look at, you know, we have all these market associations, right? You know, you go to a gig market, uh, show, all the different markets, they all have associations. A lot of those associations are very hefty. If you look at their bank accounts, right? Market may contribute money to belong to this association. Yeah. I, I don't see any reason why the people running the market associations cannot be doing surveillance testing for, for market women. Mm. They, they have a lot of money. They collect a lot of money. Look at the the NURTW, the, the motor parks. Yes. All those organizations are very rich, right? They, they all contribute a lot of money. So they should be investing in themselves, in, them, in their own members. So it's not just Nigerian Medical Association or Nigerian Bar Association or the Association of the Rich Bankers. Every group, every society should find a way to make this affordable. If we see going to test for COVID as, um, you know, like you said, somebody did not want to help me test for COVID. No, 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 no. We shouldn't see it as such. Like you said, this is not a disease that you get by being, uh, by behaving bad, right? Or being, you know, or having, you know, bad behavior. This is just something that is just widespread it in just the happens, community. happens, yeah. No, so we, we, we need to start having these discussions often and often so that we can all change our impressions, our narrative, and everybody has to buy in. Um, one sector of society cannot do it. The doctors alone cannot do it. The hospital administrators alone cannot do it. Ministry of Health alone cannot do it. Everybody has to buy in because it, it affects everybody, you know? Absolutely. Okay, um, Dr. Yemisi, so talking about the vaccine, um, let's help our viewers understand what the vaccine does. So um, are we saying that the vaccine, once you take the vaccine, you will never catch COVID again? Or is that supposed to just take away all the symptoms immediately you take the vaccine? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's a, that's a fantastic question. So there's some facts we know and a lot we still don't know mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the vaccine. Uh, every month we're learning more. Um, I think I can only talk about the two common ones that have been approved in the United States. I know there are different types of vaccines in different countries, so I'm still not sure what is going to make its way to Nigeria. I won't be surprised if we end up with multiple types of vaccines in Nigeria, which will make sense so that, you know, the more we get, the more we can vaccinate people. Yeah. But at least on the two most common ones worldwide as of now is the Pfizer and the Moderna. Uh, even those two types, the success rate was, you know, mentioned to be around 94 to 95%. So it's still not 100%. Mm. And even those numbers, it's still at least two to two and a half weeks after the second dose of the vaccine. Mm. So now the vaccination has started in the United States since December. There are people who have gotten COVID after their first dose in, while waiting for the second dose. Okay. Right? <laughs> so they are still at risk like, they, like everybody else, right? So even after getting the second dose, even after that two or three weeks is passed or a month, and you think, yes, now I'm protected, you still have to keep doing your masking, your social distancing, your hand washing, and all what we're doing, avoiding large gatherings. We still have to keep doing all that because you really don't know if you're going to be in that 5%. Mm -hmm. We still don't know how long the vaccines will last. Mm -hmm. I think one of them published a, a study last month that they were still seeing antibodies present because the antibodies is what helps you to fight severe infection if you get re-exposed after taking the vaccine. Mm. You know, I, I think some of them have reported that they still found a good amount of antibodies six months after the first dose of vaccine when they looked at the people that were in the initial trials. But as time goes on, by, by maybe middle of this year or later this year, we will have a lot more answers. We know if we need booster shots, you know, like tetanus that you get boosters every 10 years, or if it's just going to be one vaccination will last for many years. These are all answers that we still don't know. Huh. I don't think anybody knows yet. Maury, do you want to come in or oh, let me come in? <laughs> well, I think she has kind of answered the question that I have speaking on the vaccine. Mm. I've asked like, you know, 10 to 15 people that if the vaccine comes to Nigeria today, we will collect it and everybody has been saying no the people that i have asked because of the fact that they do not know the side effects that this vaccine possess so i just want to know 
if it's within your capacity to say if or not these vaccines have any, you know, future um, health hazards that can, you know, cause harms to the human body after taking them. All right. So I'm going to put a disclaimer here because I'm no infectious disease expert. Okay, I'm just going to tell you what I know as a physician. To the best of our knowledge, we don't expect any long term um, major side effect. Unfortunately, the issue of vaccines was politicized even before the vaccines became available. Mm -hmm. And the form of politicization was different depending on which country you were in. In Nigeria, we had our own share of politicization. You know, there was so much going on on social media mm -hmm. uh, summer of last year, even in Nigeria, about vaccines. So, to the best of our knowledge, even though the, the, the Moderna, the Pfizer vaccines are already vaccines, which was not, you know, often used in the past for other diseases, nothing so far has been found to be of concern for long-term side effects. Of course, nobody's going to know 100%, mm -hmm. but there are clearly side effects that can come from the vaccine. Most of them are immediate and most of them are mild. It's the same way malaria, as all of us get malaria in Nigeria and 99% of us do well once we treat it, if it's malaria, we still have a mortality rate from malaria. People yeah. still die from bread and butter malaria. Mm -hmm. So it's still the same thing with the vaccines. They, they, you, you, still, you will still see reports of anaphylactic reaction, very major, severe hospitalization requiring side effects. And, you know, there was a report of a death in California a day or two ago. So there will still be those major, but the majority of people who have received the vaccine, I, I don't have numbers, but at the top of my head, I think I can simply say over 90% have just had very mild side effects, which are common side effects that we see when we get all the vaccines. When we take our babies to the hospital for normal immunization, they we get give a them fever. Right? Yes. Because mm -hmm. you know they're going to cry, they're going to be febrile, they will mm -hmm. have fever. Mm -hmm. So most of the common side effects are just pain at the injection site. Mm -hmm. Some might have a mild fever, body aches, um, most people, uh, I, I, I've taken one, one dose and my arm was heavy that one day, the day after. Uh, the vaccination itself is almost painless. You don't really feel anything. It's a tiny needle. And some people might have some pain, or some redness, um, just some body aches. But these are all signs that the vaccination is working because the way it's supposed to work is to induce your own immune system to produce antibodies, right? Mm. To fight the, the antigen that the vaccine is going to make your body make, mm. if I'm making any sense. Okay. So all, all that the antibodies that you are producing, all those things will release some markers of inflammation, which is why we have the aches, the pains, the fever. But most of the time, they just last for a day or two. Okay. which you can easily take paracetamol. For. Okay, so Dr. Yemi so, But But before I, before I close this subject... Go ahead. In Nigeria, it, I, I'm not sure there's a ministry that is... In, I, I'm sorry, I'm blanking in the hmm. second. There's a ministry that is involved with educating the public. I can't yes, remember that's that. that's the National yeah. Orientation Agency. Thank you very much. It's an agency, not a ministry. Mm -hmm. It's a federal government paracetamol. Mm -hmm. If this is... This is the one that they need to fix. Mm -hmm. That agency needs to find a way to improve public confidence mm -hmm. on the vaccine when the vaccine arrives. The mm -hmm. success of the vaccine is when people take it. It's not that the vaccine is around. Okay. So, Dr. Yemisi, all this vaccine that you have explained very mm -hmm. nicely to us, <laughs> does it come at a cost to you as a citizen in the U.S.? So, in this country, it's been announced multiple times that it's free, no cost. And I think that's the way it is in the United Kingdom and many other countries. And I think, this is just my personal opinion, <laughs> no, no government should be able to raise their head and say they will build somebody for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I think it should be free. And I think that's a general consensus. It should be free. It is in the government's interest <laughs> to control the disease. So 
uh, immunization generally in Nigeria has mainly been free, especially a lot of, you know, the scheduled immunizations that we give children. Huh? This is the scheduled one for children. Come again. Least, you know, in government hospitals. <laughs> come again, Dr. Yemisi, it's not free. Oh. So, but, okay, Maury, do you want to come in? Or, so, I wanted to do a follow-up question. As part of fighting COVID-19, right, I realized that a lot of hospitals, when you go to a lot of hospitals, at the first, uh, first point of call, when you meet them, you're having a temperature and everything. Nobody checks for COVID, right? So can the government move beyond just these accredited centers and move this testing to all hospitals within Nigeria so that anybody that comes in first, is that not the way we should be able to fight it? And I will still go back to the cost, you understand? Bringing it down, the, bringing down the cost of the test, so that as they are testing you for malaria, COVID is part of it. There was, there was, at some point in all our lives, when you go to the hospital, they test you for HIV. Do you understand? Yeah. At some point, they test you when you are pregnant. They test they you test for you. HIV, right? So can't we incorporate COVID testing into hospitals? Because a lot of hospitals are still making the same mistake, treating people for typhoid and malaria, and these people are COVID positive. I mean. My, my sister called me that her, her husband's friend lost his mom just about maybe uh, last week, just last week here, you know. They were treating her for typhoid and malaria, typhoid and malaria. It wasn't going until they had to move her away from the hospital. They took her to isolation center, but by then it was already it was too late. Really you know, so how can we do it in such a way? Should we say, okay, this is now the hospitals or private organizations who should come together to bring this test to every hospital? The... The rapid testing, I think, is cheaper than the PCR testing, even though it's not as sensitive or specific, especially the sensitivity. So, so you may have some false negatives and some false positives. But if all, all of us, we the government, we the people, we the associations, we the NGOs, right, if all of us can find a way to, even if it's just a rapid testing, hmm. make it subsidize the cost of it, then it would be in the private hospital's best interest to say, oh, the same way we buy malaria kits to stock our hospital lab, we can also buy some rapid testing um, COVID-19 kits, yeah. kits mm -hmm. so that when patients come, they've been having symptoms today, it's always malaria. But if you've been having symptoms for three weeks and you've already been to three pharmacies and been treated, then I should be testing you for COVID. Mm. Number one. Number two, we all, everybody knows the symptoms of COVID. You don't even need to be a medical person to we all know the symptoms. So most hospitals by now should have some typical screening protocol so that any patient that comes in, now remember, it's not only the people that are coming in with malaria symptoms that may have COVID, right? Mm. So some people will come in with, uh, I broke my leg. <laughs> And they may have COVID. Mm. So they didn't even come in with COVID-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. But I think a good way would be to at least screen everybody with verbal questions. So the same way we check temperature before you enter the bank or, you know, enter some buildings. Those are all standard things. We should, for example, where I work, um, we screen every patient, not we test. Even here, we don't test everybody before mm. they come to clinic. But the day before they come to the hospital, or if they just show up at the hospital, at the gate, there's a screener. Somebody will ask them four, five, six, seven, eight questions. Have you traveled? Mm -hmm. Have you been, has anybody in your household or near they, they, you has tested positive? Mm -hmm. Are you coughing? Do you have a fever? Mm -hmm. So we can all, you know, ask those standard questions and then pick those ones that, you know, screen positive based on verbal questioning to say, okay, we will test you for COVID. Yeah. So it, it's still, except for, you know, some countries like Singapore and South Korea, that they just test tens of thousands of people every day, you know, it's still going to be difficult to test everybody that walks into a hospital, but we can still do it systematically where we will be missing less cases. Mm. But the key again is to reduce the cost of testing. Absolutely. This is the conversation that needs to continue. We have to continue. Thank you so much. We were having fun. We, we forgot to check the time that we have run out of time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Yemisi. It's always a pleasure having you. You always educate us. Uh, Maury, do you want to say quickly one word before we move and Jennifer? No, 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 no question. No, I no, no. no. As you so has she, con has she convinced you to take the vaccine? 
Oh, mm, I don't think about it. I'm still here. I didn't grow any hair. So you're fine. <laughs> How about you, yeah. Jennifer? Um, Doctor Yemisi, thank you. This was actually very insightful. Mm. As for the vaccine, and let's get here first before we decide. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited that the vaccine is coming in, and I'm really, really hopeful to see what it would do for us. But until then. Fingers crossed. Well, my own Fingers is that crossed. my own is that government, when the vaccine comes, please let it be free. <laughs> and we are begging. Before they will start doing well, I told you already, they will say they will say the vaccine is free, but you will pay for syringe. For syringe. <laughs> ah, boring. <laughs> so Waze was birthed from the need to inspire, inform, influence lives towards action. And this year we're starting our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots for us. Uh, for us to give to job seekers. Now, if you are a, a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media platform and keep telling all your friends to keep their eyes on Waze because this is going to be an all-year-round engagement. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again, very important quote. Healthcare is not a privilege. It's a right. It's a right as, it's a right as fundamental as civil rights. It's a right as fundamental as giving every child a chance to get a public education. So this is our fundamental human rights. Government, we are going to hold you accountable. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy.